Hey guys, and welcome back to Reading with Mo. Today we're going to be exploring another shelf on my bookcases behind me. Today it's going to be this one right here, which um, is right next to the one that we're doing for the month of March. So for April, we're going to be reading books off this shelf, and I'm going to be showing you what currently is living on this shelf, and what books I'm, I have read, and which ones I haven't. So let's just get straight into them. We can go ahead and start on this side and then work my way over. I have on this shelf behind me um, books that are mostly in the red orange color area. And so at the top of this stack, we have The Women of Brewster Place by Gloria Naylor, a novel in seven stories. I have not read this one. I have yet to read any Gloria Nay Naylor yet, maybe soon though. <laughs> All the books in the rest of this orange stack are from the Penguin Orange Collection. I believe I have all of them except one. I don't remember what the other one is that I don't own, but I'm sure eventually I will probably look into completing this collection, but first I need to read the ones I actually do have. I'll show you guys first the ones that I have read so far. So I have read We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson, 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northup, East of Eden by John Steinbeck, and The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. So I read four of these. So the rest of the seven that I haven't read are The Broom of the System by David Foster Wallace, on the Road by Jack Crack, Ceremony by Leslie Marmon Silko, The Call of Suthlu, and I hope I said that right, and Other Weird Stories by H.P. Lovecraft, The Crucible by Arthur Miller, The Snow Leopard by Peter Matheson, and White Noise by Don DeLillo. Carrying on with the next books that are probably going to keep falling as I go along, but oh well. We have one called The Mercies. I haven't read this, but this is the Waterstones edition. I love the um, orange flowered spray edges. This is a book that is a historical fiction, I believe, since it's 1617. It takes place during a storm on a Norwegian island. This one I definitely would like to pick up soon and prioritize, not only because it's beautiful, but also it just sounds very interesting. Then we have a couple I have read here. First we have 84 Charing Cross Road by Helen Hanf. I read this book a long time, like a long time ago, a couple years ago, and I really enjoyed it. I definitely would love to reread this book again. Um, this book is told through letters back and forth between like an American writer and then a British bookseller in Europe and I really enjoyed this book and I watched the movie and I liked that one that movie too. Then we have Dear Justice by Nick Stone which is the sequel to what I have up here which is Dear Martin. I really love these editions that they um just look like they go together so perfectly. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. Dear Martin was a five star read for me. Uh, Dear Justice, I think I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed it as well. We're following like the same world but a different character from the first book. Next we have a book that I've really thought about a lot over the years since I've read it and I want to reread it eventually soon and that is Wild by Cheryl Strayed. I really enjoyed this book. I have no interest at all in hiking the um, Pacific Coast Crest Trail but living it vicariously through this author's experience was really enjoyable and the movie with Reese Witherspoon I watched after it too. I definitely want to prioritize this as far as my rereads go whenever that happens. Next we have one I haven't read and that is Kintu by Jennifer Nansugubuga Makumbi. I picked this one up at Half Price Books a while back and it just kind of was one of those books that just looked appealed to me from seeing it on the shelf. Um, this one's described as a modern classic and has won a few different awards. It looks like it takes place, it's a reimagined history of Uganda. So this one I don't I haven't gotten to it yet. I think because the font is so tiny and it's pretty long <laughs> for the for this book, but hopefully I can get to this one soon. Then we have one I have read that is Love and Color by Bolu Babalola, Mythical Tales from Around the World Retold. This one is all different like short stories and they do all have to do with um romance, so some, some, something to do with love. I remember there were some s stories in here that I liked and some that I didn't, which is pretty pretty typical of what you could say for short story collections in general. I haven't read Lucky Purr by Henrik Pontipodian. Pontipodian. This is the Every Man's Library edition. I don't really have too many editions from Every Man's Library on my shelves. This one I think I picked up uh, probably super cheap. I either got this at Goodwill or I purchased this at um, be like book outlet or something. I know I probably didn't spend more than a few dollars because I don't really know what this book is about but I just know I 
do want to get some of the Everyman's Library editions and this was a book that I hadn't heard of. I think what drew me into this book is that it's described as the great Danish novel and I hadn't heard of it before so I wanted to give it a try myself. And we have one I haven't read but I'm very much anticipating getting to and that is Men Be Reaped by Jasmine Ward. This is her memoir. I have read uh, Salvage the Bones and I really enjoyed that book. Would love to reread it again in the future and I haven't really, I don't think I've picked up anything else by Jasmine Ward since I read that. So I finally picked this book up from Target pretty recently so I'm hoping that this one can be a priority. We have Fire and Blood by George R.R. Martin. This book has been seen on my shelves for a while because it is very long and this book is almost 700 pages and I just have to be really in the mood. Right now I'm actually, am, I am right now reading a book by George R.R. R. Martin. It's A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. So I think that some point in this year I would like to read this book because I know that there is a sequel eventually going to be coming out to this one too. And so I would like to be able to read them kind of close together. I think once we get an official release date for book two then I'll really prioritize reading that book. We have another one I haven't read. This shelf has a lot of books I'm realizing on it that I haven't read. I'll show you guys kind of the stack of the two the two stacks next to each other once I'm finished. That's Stamped from the Beginning by Ibram X. Kendi. This one is The Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America. This is one I really have been wanting to get to too but also it's just like a very dense book or it's kind of a little bit intimidating to me but I don't think it really is written like in a very like non-accessible way and I've heard nothing but good things about this book. It's one of those ones that I know I will get to, I'm just not sure when. Next we have The Sun and Splendor by Sharon K. Penman. I haven't read this and I have had this on my shelves for a long time. Uh, I purchased this years ago back when I was really in my historical fiction mood, especially reading about like um well, this follows Richard III, but re reading about like the Tudors and that kind of stuff at one point in my reading journey, that was like what I was really into. And I haven't really been so much anymore. So I'm not sure if this is a book that I'm still into. I would love to uh, attempt to read it. And then it's like, ugh, the font is so tiny and it's um, ni over 900 pages that it just, every time I look at it, I'm just like, ugh, I don't know. But I do need to figure out if I'm going to read it or not because if not it's taking up quite a lot of a uh, valuable real estate space on my bookshelf. We have another one that I kind of feel similarly to and that is uh, Marisha Pessel's The Special Topics in Calamity Physics. I read another book by Marisha Pessel I think before. This book has definitely been sitting on my shelves for a long time. I just need to figure out whether it's one I want to read or not. I feel like maybe with this shelf something that would help is if I did like a, oh, what's that called? I should do a try chapter challenge or tag or whatever with a few of the books on this shelf so I can decide whether I still want to keep them on my shelves or not, if I'm still interested in reading them or not. We have a couple books that I have read. The first one is The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. I read this book actually a long time ago and it was back when I was really super interested in potentially maybe reading all of the books on Oprah's book club picks but I don't really know if that's really something I'm still wanting to do because there's a lot of the books that are on there that I'm like not too interested in reading anyway but um I read I don't really remember too much about this book this is one that I would like to reread to see if it's one I want to continue to keep on my shelves or not because I it's been so long since I read it I don't really remember too much about it and then we have Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris I really enjoyed reading this mystery thriller book um I would highly recommend the audiobook I actually listened to it on the audiobook but I still have kept the physical book because I really enjoyed it and it's very rare for me to do that with a mystery thriller. I don't know if it was the book itself or I just read it at the perfect time. It was the perfect book and place for what I was in the mood for but I really enjoyed this one. It's a mystery thriller that I would definitely recommend and I do actually recommend this book to a lot of books to a lot of people when they ask me for mystery thriller recommendations like my friends and stuff. Then we have this gorgeous edition of Love in the Time of Cholera by G Gar Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This is made, uh, published by Vintage Books. I just need to take a moment to appreciate how beautiful this book is. And to make it even better, there's actually illustrations. It's illustrated by Luisa Rivera. And there are full color illustrations throughout the book that also are really beautiful. They are exactly my type of art style. I love it, the color scheme and everything. I think that um, they will help really en enhance the reading experience when I do get around to reading this book. I have heard 
about this book so much. I know it's like kind of like a modern classic, but I have not gotten to it yet. The next book I have read, and that is She Came to Slay, The Life and Times of Harriet Tubman by Erica Armstrong Dunbar. This book is a nonfiction book all about Harriet Tubman, and I love the way that it's laid out. It just makes it so much interesting to read, especially with nonfiction. Like, it can be kind of dry. I love when there's illustrations and pictures and different kinds of things that are mixed media that are pulled into nonfiction books that really help to keep your interest more. And I do love the art style that is with these books as well. I'm not sure if it says who the artist was in this one. Or, no, it says the... Um, illustrations are done by Monica Ahano Ahanonu. Yes, I really enjoyed this book all about Harriet Tubman and I would definitely recommend if you're looking to read a book about her. Next we have another nonfiction book that I have read and that is The Library Book by Susan Orlean. This, I love the edition of this one. I just love the whole cover design. I love when books look beautiful when they're just naked hardcovers and don't have the dust jacket on and still look just as gorgeous. This is all about the history of libraries and if you are a book reader or anything it's definitely a must read I feel like. If you are a book nerd like me you will definitely enjoy this book. Then we have another mystery book I read pretty recently and that is The Maid by Nita Prose. This one I really enjoyed reading. I think I actually, I don't remember if I listened to this one on audiobook or not, but I remember this one was sent to me by Book of the Month a couple months ago. We're following a maid who's kind of ends up being incriminated in this murder or that happens in her hotel that she's working at. It was fun for to me, like this almost counts as a cozy mystery, even though it does have some more serious things that do happen in the book too. I just really enjoyed the reading this book and I felt like it was Pretty entertaining for a mystery especially um, lately I feel like a lot of them have been a big letdowns to me but I really did enjoy this one. And we're on to our last couple of books here and I actually have read both of these. The first one is Lakewood by Megan Giddings. This one I think people have described as like a social horror book. I enjoyed this. I know it was kind of like one of those things where people either hate it or not. I enjoyed reading it and I definitely am looking forward to reading other books by Megan Giddings. And then lastly we have Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas which is also another beautiful cover and I just and I just love Angie Thomas's books. This is the signed first edition. I will always purchase anything <laughs> that she put, comes out with. This book is actually kind of like a prequel to The Hate You Give where it's following Star who is the main character of that book. It's her father I believe that we're following in this book when he is a teenager. So those are all the books that we're currently residing on this shelf. So these are all of the books that I have read that live on this shelf. I have read 15 of them and then these are all of the books on the shelf that I have not read. Altogether there are 17 that I have not read. So actually the numbers are pretty close then. There's about 32 books on this shelf which if you guys have seen my previous shelves it's kind of about the average that I tend to keep on each shelf is around 30-ish books. So of the 32 on the shelf I have read 15, haven't read 17. So from these books right here I'm going to be attempting to read um, at least a few of them <laughs> during the month of April if you want to see what books I end up choosing and picking out to add to my TBR, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because my TBR for the month of April will hopefully be posted within the next couple of days or weeks. <laughs> I don't know exactly when this video is going up, but it will be up very soon, my TBR, so if you want to check that out, it will be there. <laughs> We're making some good progress here. So far we've gone through four of the shelves. So this is the fourth shelf that we've made it through so far, and next month I think I will just continue kind of going in the order from now on. All the way through the bottom that they are to make it a little bit easier to keep track so I just did this shelf I've already done these three right here and so I think the next month we'll be doing these books as well so definitely stay subscribed if you want to see in about a month or so the books that are on my I guess you could talk, call this like my green teal boob bookshelf and um that's it for this video I will go ahead and see you guys in the next one bye